Scorpio, welcome to your monthly sidereal forecast for August 2015. My name is Athen. So we've got a very busy uh, month this month, I would say. I'm generally speaking, just in terms of the astrology. Um, I'll go ahead and go through it one by one here uh, through the dates. And if you have any questions, please do let me know. So right at the beginning, first and second, we've got Saturn going station direct. Um, after a five-month retrograde period of mostly your first house where he recently went in. But as of recent, he's uh, recently as in this early part of the year. But as of recent, last month, um, Saturn went back into your 12th house where he had been for the past few years, uh, helping you get discipline with some of the spiritual stuff about rest, relaxation, tranquil energies, things of that nature. So this is going to be a month where Saturn is highly activated. Um, he's going to be forming a lot of aspects, uh, squares actually with the personal planets, which I'll talk about. But right at the beginning, there's this shift and understanding perhaps of, of the importance of this spiritual stuff. Basically what you've been working on here for the past um, few uh, few years um, and you know it really just comes down to having that peace and presence in your life and tranquility and um, you know just simplicity so whatever that is whatever systems you've been building there in your life foundations there to have that peace and tranquility I think it's a good month to continue working on that and I think you'll notice that shift here at the beginning so that's the first and second then on the third uh, Jupiter does square up too. whoops Jupiter does square up to that um, Saturn. So here it does uh, lift up that energy of Saturn a little bit when it comes to these 12th house matters. So I think you should be feeling quite optimistic about this stuff, perhaps. Um, stay grounded with it, though. Stay very disciplined. That's going to be an energy for all of us to consider. Uh, but vice versa, Saturn squaring up to Jupiter is helping you discipline a lot of this energy that perhaps has been expanding for you in regards to your ninth house, which is travel, um, expansion. It's philosophy, astrology, things like that. You should have had a lot of um, opportunities over the past year to expand your mind, to expand your spirituality, your wisdom, things like that. And um, now you can certainly really concretize it and make it into a system and structure, which is Saturn, so that you take those opportunities and make them into a grounded reality. So that's the early part. I really recommend that. You know, it's a, it's a whole month of that grounded energy there and that discipline, but... Um, here with that square up to Jupiter, specifically relating to anything that has been or does come in um, this month uh, re regarding the open horizons, which can be philosophical, can be literally through overseas matters, um, traveling or, uh, you know, intellectually, such as through philosophy, university studies, things like that. So look to the past year. That'll give you a good indication of what those opportunities are like for you. So that's uh, the third, and at that same time, uh, Venus will be going retrograde back into your ninth house. So perhaps you're going to be uh, reflecting this uh, month on those things, on those ninth house matters. We're going to have a new moon here. There's still a lot of activity here in that ninth house of yours. So reflect on what it is you value about those things, maybe in regards to relationships and this tranquility energy as well. But um, yeah, reflecting on those areas, especially what gives you that open horizon feeling, what you know, because limits and structures are important in life, but you know, how can you have the structure so that you can have more freedom? You can have more liberation. You know, you can enjoy those open horizons. So, some things to consider there um, this month with Venus retrograde. Then through the fourth through the seventh, we've got this three-way conjunction, this stellium, as it's called um, in astrology. Stelium is more than one conjunction, but a three-way conjunction here uh, between Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus, all here at the top of your chart, between your ninth and your tenth house. So one thing to keep in mind with that Saturn is it's squaring up to all three of these positions, so stay disciplined with a lot of this stuff, but what you'll probably find is a strong optimistic energy um, coming in, and the optimistic energy will likely be relating to perhaps how you can take a lot of the stuff that you have been expanding through life path and stuff over the past year and take it into an area that's much more about service work or, or your career. You know, it's a very grounded part of the chart. It's about commitment, long-term things, your legacy in life, how to take that, you know, uh, passion and inspiration and turn it into something that gives and, and contributes. So that's a uh, very exciting energy actually. And the sun will be conjoining up to Jupiter a little bit later, really emphasizing that as well. But these three here emphasizing a lot of different areas of your chart, 
I would say it's a uh, optimistic time uh, with uh, your self-expression, with um, your finances, with relationships, with that alone time, um, with groups and friends, and anything that is about transformation. I say all that because these are all uh, the rulers of those uh, particular houses. So you can see it's involving a lot of different things, but um, I think the optimism with the mind and then in general with uh, your enjoyments, I think, will be uh, quite high. So that's nice and it's going into career and stuff. So I do recommend over the next year to uh, get involved with, uh, you know, putting energy into career, expanding on that level and anything else that's public or legacy related. So that's uh, that whole sixth, seventh time period. And then on the 12th, we've got Mercury opposing up to Neptune. So here, it's important this whole month and into next month as well to balance these things relating to uh, career and stuff with the home life because your home life has been going through a sort of spiritual transformation um, over many years where it's important for you to trust, have faith, and go with the flow um, in regards to anything about your sentiments, which is often home and family, but it's anything that you're emotionally connected to. And all of that's been very healing as well. So this is a classic example of balancing career or uh, public life with your uh, home or domestic life and um, finding the peace with that, especially because Mercury is the planet of our intellect, trying to figure things out on the analytical level. We just won't be able to so much, depending on your personal chart, of course. But generally speaking, with Neptune, it, it, te it tends to cloud things. So if you try to figure out too much about the career, or the work, or the home stuff, or whatever it is during this time period around the 12th, you'll notice that it might just be causing more confusion. And, and the reason is, is because it's important for you to have that faith and trust. And that's the time period that is is on the table for all of us with this opti, opti, um, opposition but it is happening in the area of career and, and and home life for you in particular so that being said um, that's uh, on the 12th and then on the 14th we do have the new moon which is taking place in that ninth house so there are some new beginnings shaping up about the um, expansive energies about life path about spirituality things of that nature so whatever it is for you reflect around this time the energies will likely be quite low around the middle part of the month but as the month unfolds um, there will be more and more of that lunar energy available for you to continue to work towards any of these things that opened your open your horizons which are the ninth house so that's the new moon and then um, all's quiet in the major aspects up until about the 21st when we've got uh, the Sun squaring up to Saturn. So just like with Mercury and Jupiter and Venus, now the Sun is going into an exact position with Saturn here um, on the 21st. And what's interesting is when he does, uh, because Saturn's in this position right here, he's going into that 10th. So all with this transition energy, there's this kind of discipline about it. And so here it's uh, pa more passionate about career. And that's where the emphasis is really gonna start to build for you as the month unfolds. And this is where, where you'll have a new moon next month. So the important thing here is, you know, relating to your fun and passion. If you're noticing it's quite serious this month, as it will likely be for all of us, that's good. This is Saturn helping us really work with this, get disciplined, take care of these career things so that they're long term and do whatever it is that we have to do to build those solid foundations in that 10th house. And if we do, if we put in that hard work, Saturn does always pay off where that hard work is put in. So these are the things so, so you can have more passion, more enjoyment in your work, which is the sun and the 10th. So that's the uh, 21st. And then on the 26th, the sun will be conjoining up to Jupiter. So around this sort of uh, last couple of weeks, really, of the month, it should be quite optimistic about these things. Interestingly, although there's this serious energy about it as well, or at least opportunities coming in, perhaps. The sun does naturally rule your 10th house. So career opportunities, opportunities of advancement, things like that are on the table, but it will come through from that hard work and discipline. But um, I feel like it's there. It's nice to have this kind of configuration. And again, just with uh, Saturn and Jupiter, it's taking those perhaps possibilities or open doors and then working hard at it, which is Saturn being implemented into it. So that's the 26th, and then at that same time, Mercury is going to go into your 11th, where he's going to conjoin up to your North Node on the 28th, reminding you that this whole year is about networking. It's about groups. It's about causes and ideals larger than self. It's perhaps about deriving income and satisfaction from your career and your work, so focusing on those things. And Mercury can help you understand more about your life path in general around this time, around the 28th. 
Then on the 29th, we've got Saturn going back into your first. So Saturn was here, you know, up until, uh, you know, just recently in this early part of uh, 2015, he was in the first. So you guys perhaps started to assume more responsibilities in general. Maybe it's because of work now uh, or whatever it is, but it's, it's important to be open to uh, having that maturity, that responsibility. And um, through that, over the next two and a half years, you'll be finding that um, you're, you're working with that disciplined energy so that you are becoming more masterful, more of a leader perhaps, more of a um, disciplined person and mature person over this uh, coming time period. But it'll come through you wanting and being open to assuming more responsibilities within reason, of course. And of course, being patient with anything relating to your goals, your drives, ambitions, which is all what the first house uh, represents. So that's uh, Saturn going back in there on the 29th. And then on the 29th as well, we do have that full moon which is taking place in Aquarius um, in that fourth house. So anything new relating to home and family that you guys have been involved with over the past six months, this can be a culmination point of that and a culmination point of any new things you started about that ninth house. Travel, expansion, you know, the open horizons. So um, a good time to reflect on those things. The energy will be high at the end of the month and it will be conjoining Neptune though. So here it's about that faith, that trust, that everything is unfolding the way that it it will um, in the way that it should, of course, uh, because there's a divine plan. Um, and that divine plan is taking place um, for you in regards to home, family, past and roots and things like that. So uh, very nice there. It can also be, again, that emphasis to balance work life with um, home life as well. Then that's pretty much the month. But uh, leading into September, I want to mention that um, we do have a conjunction between Venus and Mars here in this ninth house, as we'll feel as uh, the tail end of this month comes to a close. And this is about a lot of the stuff maybe you've been reflecting on about um, those open horizons and how you can put energy into it, because Mars hasn't been in the best position um, of in Cancer here this um, you know past couple months, really even in Gemini as well. So um, he's going to shift into Leo, which is a much more comfortable placement for Mars to be in. So all of this stuff you did reflect on about your passions, about, you know, and your spirit about life, um, you can certainly start to implement. And there's a lot of this yin yang masculine and feminine energy that can be quite heightened um, in regards to that. But utilize it. Use that Mars energy. That'll be going into September mostly as Mars makes his way into Leo. But um, yeah, reflecting on your values um, and then implementing them at the end of the month will certainly be highlighted. And then, of course, um, the sun will be opposing up to Neptune as well. So emphasizing that trust, faith and everything in regards to the 10th and the fourth house. So Scorpio, have a nice month. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. If you're new to Sidereal, do check the website or if you'd like a personal session and I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.